In Excel, you can work with dates and times in a mathematical way. The underlying concept is based on the idea that every date has a value starting January 1st, 1900. And it is unlikely you would ever use that date in a formula or a function. But if you were to type 1 slash 1 slash 1900 and press enter, you have actually entered the value of one if you are not sure you can click the comma button and now how often do you really need to see that date date number rarely i will undo that here is a date in 2015 what's the number for that here is a comma that's what it is but it does ultimately explain how we can work with dates in a mathematical way for example a starting date here in uh, 2008 and ending date this could apply to a person's tenure in an organization it could refer to a piece of equipment how many days have elapsed between these two dates equal a later date minus an earlier date how many days have elapsed this amount of we can also work in a similar way with times over to the right in column f here a check in time a checkout time so let's subtract a two equal the later time minus the earlier time and we get an answer like this eight hours and 54 minutes somewhat times are considered portions of days so if we were to make the entry nine colon zero zero we can type it that way we could type it as a nine space a and if it, and if it were 9 p.m nine space p if we could type it that way we are actually entering values here and if you would like to see the values of these click comma these are actually 3 slash 8 if we show more decimals so what is 9 am really it's a 3 by 8 of a day it's 9 out of 24 and here the example same thing add a decimal and the same thing there and the same thing here but this is 9 pm so it's a 7 by 8 of a day Rarely do we see those numbers. However, there will be times when you are copying data back and forth. You will see numbers and occasionally you will see a column, for example, called date. And you might see numbers if they are in the current time frame, around 42,000, 40,000. Remember this cell D. One, its actual date will you as I click comma, that is 42,351. So occasionally, when you see clusters of numbers like these, be thinking of a possibility that could be dates. And sometime you will see them in the date column and be wondering what's going on. Convert them to actual dates. Now, in a sense, we don't really convert these. If you saw numbers like these and you said, I'm pretty sure that's a date, you could. On the home tab, click the arrow here in the number group right here and choose short date. We get that display and occasionally, but rarely would you want to show or display the date as long date, but you can. Now we can also use math with dates looking forward or backward. A piece of equipment is installed on December 15th of 2015. It's got a lifespan of almost 15 days. And when is the replacement date? So equal the date plus that value and that's January 23rd of 2020. And we, of course, can look backward in time too. 90 days before this date. 90 days after it. Example here, equal this date minus 90. Or down here, equal this date plus 90. Now, when you are entering dates, typically it's best to use dash or slash. And if you are in a different country that uses a different display type than in the US, your original settings are probably already there. But if you were typing in, for example, September 3rd in US, you would type 9 slash 3. But in other countries, you might type 3 slash 9. But following that, you want to put in the year. And a two-digit year works just fine. But there is a slight problem potentially with that entry. So I'm going to put in, for example, the birth date of one of employees, one of the retired employees that is who was born in 1931. So I will type a 31 and press enter. 
and we see the display there 1931 there is another employee born on the same day but in a different year and earlier that employee was born in 1929 so i will type uh, 29 and look what happens 2029 here i typed 31 and we see 1931 here i typed a 29 off to the left is a depiction of an arbitrary break that microsoft has determined if you type a year a two digit year anywhere from 30 through 99 excel automatically assume you mean previous century the 20th century and if you type a date that is called a year of 0 through 29 excel assumes you mean this century the 21st century so in situations like this type four digit years what i have should have typed here and i will do it now nine slash three slash 1929 put in the four digit year if i truly want that to be recorded there so be alert to that now in the past in the mid 90s this brick point was a 19 and 20 and so i would imagine somewhere in the next five years or so excel will make a change here so that the automatic entry will start at 40 through 99 and this portion here will go from 0 through 39 but be alert to that concept and it's not a bad idea even though it takes up a bit more horizontal space to display dates with four digit years remember you do have the option if you press ctrl 1 that takes us to format cells on the number tape choosing date we have got lots of options here some of the options use two digit years that's just fine as long as you understand there is a potential issue with older dates going back to 1929 like we saw here this would be a bad display here if we were talking about ages of retires this does for the moment mean 1931 and 1929 but it is much better to see the display as a four digit year and keep in mind too there are other displays out there too there are other displays out there too there is a one keystroke shortcut you might be interested in it's control shift 3 sometimes described as control shift pound sign both cases of course we do use control shift and that key that has the three and the pound sign on it depicts the data this way it eliminates perhaps the temporary data as to which month it is because it displays the three character month so doing that here possibly control shift pound sign there we are it looks like this remember to anytime we go to format cells by way of control plus one on the date tape lots of built-in options here for date displays earlier we saw one example of working with times we can also work with dates and times together for example you have got some kind of an electrical system some kind of a power system and maybe it went up or down on a certain time we have another time when it restarted something like this there is a time lapse there of about three days not quite but how can we calculate the difference here well the way we see the information now we can't do anything with that but we can make the entry in one of two ways we can put in date and time together so what here i am going to type 11 slash 17 slash 2015 space x and now i can either type colon 0 0 or 6 space p i could also type 18 colon 0 0 the shortest would be 6 space p and as i press enter we see the display that is a workable number and i can do the same kind of thing here but just to show that we can do it here i will put in the time first so i will type 3 colon 40 space p or i could have type 15 colon 40 without the space p space and now i will put in the date 11 slash 20 slash 15 and we can subtract this equal the later entry minus the earlier entry we have an answer not exactly what we want but we could say that is 2.9 days well that is correct but that's not the way we would typically display this how do we want to display this as ors now 
here is an odd display up here. We could use this. Probably the more standard way would be press Ctrl plus 1. Or you can go to right click format cells there too. And pick the time format that does not include an AM or PM. 1330 would be logical. And as you do this, you get an answer. But I think we know that's incorrect. It's not 21 hours. It covers almost a 3 day period. So this is an ODD. When you deal with hours that go above 24, you only get the remainder. It's like you are using the mode function maybe. That is not the correct answer and it's pretty obvious that it is not. So once again, we will go to format cells, control 1 or right click format cells and right back again to the time category here. And you certainly would not guess this first time around. I'm going to click on the entry here that is got a 37 in it and look at the display up there 69 hours and 40 minutes now it does show seconds which are not too critical not harmful either and if you don't want to see the seconds click custom and then in this display right here simply backspace out of here everything to the right of the mm entry there we are the h within brackets here means show hours over 24. I can't give you a good reason for why this formatting already exists, but this is how we work around it. And there we are. There is the correct answer, 69 hours and 40 minutes. Recognize what we are doing here. We are subtracting information across more than a single day here. So there are lots of capabilities for working with dates and times in Excel. And we have discussed something about that in this particular tutorial. Excel has numerous functions for dealing with dates and times and although less frequently used than other functions, there are functions called date, year, month, day and also correspondingly time and or minute second. Let's imagine you might have a list consisting of some years some months some days and you want to construct a date or in other words create a date right here we can do this with the function called date equal date get the year in this case it's in cell a2 comma we get the month it's in cell b2 comma and the day is in cell c2 complete the entry and we have got a date there in some situations, when you have got a list of years and months and dates, you might want to turn them all into the first day of the month. In that case here, instead of putting in the day entry coming out of column C here, you could just put in the number 1. And then if we were to copy this down the column or just a few cells, we can see those are all the first day of the month. Backtracking. Pressing Ctrl Z, if we really did want to construct the accurate dates, of course, we would use that reference here. C1, complete that we would use the reference here. C2, for the day, complete the entry and then copy down the column, possible, possibly all the way by double clicking. So we can construct a date from years, months and dates coming out of other cells. And sometimes we do the reverse. We have got some data entries somewhere maybe these are manually typed in or maybe they were created like the list we see in column d right now they look like pure dates looks fine so we might want to extract the year from them or the month or the date or all of them so as soon as you see one of these you know the, what the others are going to be here we'll simply pull out the year we see it it is four digits Month is going to be one or two digits depending upon the month and day is going to be one or two digits depending upon the month. So we can extract the year, the month or the day from a date entry and highlight all these possibly to copy them down the column, double click and we see our other entries, year, month and day. And similarly with times, although less frequently used, you might want to create a time based on hours, minutes and seconds in other cells. 
equal time or is expected first we will grab that from cell k2 comma minute out of cell l2 comma and seconds if present out of cell m2 and that's what it looked like we don't necessarily have to see it display this way so if you don't care for this display you can press ctrl 1 go right into format cells and consider some of the other time displays here sometimes you don't want to display seconds they are just not important to you this first the second option you see here right there displays this in 24 hour style so as i drag this down a little bit notice some of these are afternoon so we see the entry like this another approach here there is another keystroke shortcut Control shift at the rate also described as Control shift 2 that displays these with the am pm so here we are simply constructing time like we did earlier with day pulling in information by hour minute and second and the reverse like we did with day same general idea we have got times listed here and we might want to pull out the hour or the minute or the second or r3 equal hour looking at a time there is the hour and minute same general idea pulling out the minute from here there we see it and second much less likely to be used but in some situations valuable the second entry 54 in this case so we can pull together the information by way of the time function here or extract information from a time by using or minute and second and similarly as we saw earlier with dates construct a date with the date function pull information out of a date by using the function year month and day applied to a date Excel has two functions related to date and time that allow us to work with dates and time in a dynamic fashion. In cell A2, I want to depict the current date. At the time of this recording, it's uh, December of 2018. So if I simply want to put in today's date as if I were typing it, I will press Ctrl semicolon, a create shortcut. And if I want to put in the current time, I will press Ctrl Shift semicolon that puts in the current time. Now, if I want to use the date in a dynamic way, there is the function called today. As you type it, type equal today, that's all you need to type, press enter, and for the current time, equal now. But this will display the current date and time together. Both of these entries are dynamic, meaning as we go about our business and do other things on the worksheet, we might check back here, and they might change so now if it were near midnight and i'm working and i'm making some changes here there whatever at some point i might look over here and it might then read december the next date so now we can stare at this for a while and nothing will happen but in a minute or so or even less than a minute by now if i make some changes elsewhere i will look over here and this will likely be displayed as another time see if that happens right now i will make a change i will just type an entry type one press enter and that is uh, almost this time or might not have changed the current time it did not change so now i am quickly i am going to lose my fascination for that but you see what happens here this is a dynamic moving entry it's the function now remember as you type it equal now there are some functions in Excel, like these two and a few others that have parentheses as all functions do, but there is nothing between them. Now, it is a fact about these two that explains a certain problem that sometimes people encounter as they work with Excel. I have gotten this request from somebody once uh, who was almost in panic mode who said, I have got this current workbook and I open it sometimes and I just look at it look at that sheet and i close it and i get this prompt that says do you want to save your changes and i know i haven't made any changes so what is going on here if you use the today function or the now function at any time anytime you open that workbook excel changes this cell even if it is in the same day or even within the same minute 
it always makes changes to these entries so at times you might open this look at it close it you will get the prompt if the today function or the now function happens to be within the workbook somewhere but think of these as dynamic entries and we can use them in interesting ways for example we have got some items here with some due dates how many days away from this is now days from the due date now as i am doing this if you are looking at this moving a month from now three months from now next year two years from now you will get different answers if you were to type in right now equal today close brackets this day here so i am getting the answer like this now when we see answers like this it is like what is going on here i don't understand anytime you work with dates and the answer turns up as a date you certainly want to change it the comma button up here is one easy way to do that another way is to click the drop arrow above choose general that is likely to work most of the time because right now today means december 2018 and if i look at this uh some days later if i save this file look at it tomorrow that's going to read 143 or somewhat like that 140 plus now most of these dates here are in the past but maybe i'm uh, not too attentive to it and i will just drag this down i will actually double click to copy it down faster as i am working with the data right now remember it's december 9th and i am subtracting in a different direction so be sensitive be aware of that idea now maybe that was a typo maybe not that's so we can use this in different day ways and imagine thinking of this as a dynamic tool and as we open and close this file these numbers are going to be different every single day keep in mind too when you are tabulating the differences between dates as we see them here here is a difference that's e2 minus e1 it's almost 62 days if you reverse the order and it's not to say that it is wrong but let's say that it is probably better if you take the later date minus the earlier date here we have an answer and of course you just ignore the negative that of course too is a 62 day difference now if you have a column and a list called age nearly always it should be a calculation so now if a heading says age 8 sign up or age 8 enrollment that is going to be a static number but if you want this entry to always be accurate there are a number of different functions you could use one is date diff but no matter how you get to this you will use today's date if you want this to be accurate here is one function covered uh, in the coming tutorials date diff it says i have got a starting date somewhere comma and i have got another date somewhere how about today remember uh, this is a moving target date right now for me at the moment does mean december 2018 and if you are trying to use the same function later in this very cell you will get a different answer if it is beyond a year round bracket y enter so that person is almost 40 plus years old right now soon to be 48 or 47 whatever at about a month and a half from where i am right now double click and again when you open this uh, file and try this function right here possibly if you are looking at this after january 29th of 2019 you will see the number 49 or 50 depending upon which year remember this is a moving target and if i have an entry in here december i don't at the moment but if i did have an entry that say december uh, 10th or whatever i might have a certain age to the right if i were to close my file and save it and open it tomorrow which is december uh 16th or 10th for me that number or 23 for me that number will have changed so this number you can say is always accurate it's accurate to the day so for example here if just for purposes of demonstration if i make this entry here be 12 slash 10 and if i make it uh, december 9th enter it is 44 so you see how that works we are using the today function in a dynamic way and there could be similar uses with the now function as relates to time so the function today and the function now allow us to enter the date in a dynamic way 
and possibly use it in formulas. You saw the way today was being used over here as well. We have techniques, we have methods available here for using these entries, calculating date differences in a dynamic way using the today and the now function. Welcome to guys to the next tutorial in Excel advanced tips and tricks series. Now knowing day of the week can be very important with certain kinds of data as you all know. You might be analyzing sales data over a multi-year period. Which day of the week is busiest? Is there a trend? Has it changed over time? Orders, shipments, which days are busier than others? Which days of the week? How do we figure out days of the week? One simple way, probably not the best, is to format date entries a bit differently. So in column A, I am going to change the format here by either right clicking, going to format cells or pressing Control 1. Either way will take us to the format cells dialog box. And on the number tape, category date, we do see lots of options here. This option right here, although quite wide, does display day of the week and there we are we see day of the week this is probably not the best way to op to approach this issue so let me undo that and use a function here called weekday referring to cell a2 weekday the answer may be a bit disappointing at first is a two that means it's a monday one is a sunday two is a monday three Tuesday and so on. But even the number itself we can work with in certain kinds of formulas. Nothing wrong with that. So I think many times when we do this, though we would like to actually see the day of the week. So we were not really throwing away the number. We can, by the way of format cells, control plus one, or right click and format cells, go to the category on the number tab called custom and where we see the word general here just drag across it type three d's and as you do this look above we see m o n type four d's we see monday so three d's or four d's all we are doing here is changing the format of cell b2 we are not changing the content we are only changing the format and we see monday double clicking here copy it down the column now the number two is still there the number three is still here and we can use if logic in different situations here, referring to those cells by number, number one through seven. We can also use this in a different way, perhaps along with data validation. Let's imagine that we have got a shipping date here. Some of these dates here might be weekdays, some of them might be weekends. How do we know? Equal weekday. Refer to that cell there. Four is okay. Let's double click and see what some of the others are. There is a one, that's a Sunday, and we don't do shipping on Sunday. This is a seven, that's a Saturday. We don't do shipping on such a day as well. So let's change these shipping dates. Whoever made the entry just was not aware of that concept, or maybe this was set up in another worksheet, and whoever set it up just did not think about the fact we don't do shipping on such a days and Sundays. So. We are going to use some if logic here, equal if to see if the weekday of this cell right here is equal to one, meaning it's a Sunday. And if it is, comma, we are going to take that date and add one to it. In other words, we are going to turn it into a Monday. So whatever is in cell F2 plus one, comma, now if it is not equal to a one, we want to check to see if it is equal to a seven and there we will subtract. So to save some typing time, I will simply highlight this, press Ctrl C, click behind the comma, press Ctrl V, and here we are looking to see if this is equal to a seven, if it is a such a day. And there we want to subtract one and we will turn the date into a Friday. Now we need a separate if right here to check for that category because there is a third possibility and that is that it is not a Sunday and it is not a Saturday. So in this second if here, following the action that we take when the weekday happens to be Saturday, we subtract one comma. 
otherwise we are simply going to display the shipping date as we already see it so we will click the shipping date entry in cell f2 and two right parenthesis here complete the entry and sometimes you will get an entry like this if the cell has not been formatted i will simply copy the format from here rightward i am dragging with the right mouse button into the cell and as i release the right mouse button copy here is formats only so there is an adjusted date in this case it did not need to be adjusted the next one will be adjusted it is currently sunday but it is going to be monday the 24th as we copy downward so that's an adjustment there there is a change here is another one this goes from saturday to friday most of them are the same so we see this formula right here adjusting the dates here by way of testing using the weekday function a valuable function to allow us to determine which days of the week certain dates occur on dear students in this worksheet called network days we are tracking projects starting dates ending dates in a project length with a simple formula here that really subtracts the two dates and this is just fine if this is a seven day a week project but many times that's not the case we only want to count weekdays so we will show initially how this would work for any country where the weekdays are monday through friday instead of this number here which counts all days let's use a function called network days this is a long function name so as you start to type this and right away you are probably seeing network days right here click this tab it into place notice below this another function which we will see in a moment network days dot inta meaning international so we will tape this into place and we have a starting date that's in cell b2 comma and ending date right here so how many days has this project taken if it's in the past or it overlaps the future makes no difference so we will simply press enter it's 68 days this does not count such a days and sundays copying this down the column let's check out the other working days as well so now we are not counting such a days and sundays and off to the right you see another column it's called holidays we can also take those into account and so as we look at these different lists and of course the holiday list might vary with certain companies and certain organizations let's also take those into account so this first entry says 68 days and if we would take into account the holidays comma after that last entry and now go highlight either all or at least the relevant holidays so it makes no difference if we highlight more than or necessary if we are concerned with just the relevant ones we would highlight these cells down here somewhere maybe that's close enough right there good enough and then press enter and it's 67 days so only one day difference probably labor day in the us so we can do that for the others too so keep an eye on the other numbers instead of 46 that's a 45 41 it's a 39 and so on now the problem here though is it highlighting a different number of cells so maybe what we should have done to handle all these and what i can do now so go back to the first entry and make that be an absolute reference and why not highlight all these it's okay if we highlight more than are necessary highlight all those press the function key f4 and we will have an entry there and then as we drag these downward we will see some of the others change as well so network days it allows us to calculate the amount of time lapse between two different dates not counting such as days and sundays and also not including holidays provided we have got that list nearby now occasionally there is a little bit of confusion about how this works suppose we take a situation here where we are using a monday on a certain date for example here i will use 12 7 15 that's a monday 2015 that's a monday and then over here i will put in the corresponding friday which would be the 11th 12 11 2015 now i'm going to drag both of these downward and have the same entries 
and if we simply tabulate the difference between the two, we get a 4. But if we use network days, whether it's holidays or not, in this case no holidays, we get a 5. Now which is right? Network days does, does count the starting date and the last date. But when we are subtracting dates, we get a different answer. So from time to time, note that difference and if you are talking about full days, network days does get the job done. It does count the starting day and the ending date. And when we are subtracting days, even though many times this is likely to work just fine, it's a short time period and it does not count the two days. It says, in effect, what's the difference between let's say an arbitrary time on this day and that same arbitrary time on this day. Difference is 4. Be careful with that difference. So network days allows us to count the difference between days and take into account holidays when necessary and it does not count weekends. Now, so what if you are in a country where the working days and the holidays and the weekends are a bit different? So as we are putting in network days, we also see another option here called network days dot international, INTA, meaning international. Tape that into place and we will start here, same date, B2, starting date, comma, C2, ending date, comma, and then we see that this choice. We see all the possible entries for two consecutive days, such a day, Sunday, Sunday, Monday, so on and so on. All possibilities there for two consecutive days. And then we see references here to each single day only. So possibly you are in an environment where you work every day except Sunday. And so maybe Sunday only would be the holiday or in a different culture, maybe Friday only and so on. So you have got different options here that you could use. The default, if you do nothing here, means such a day Sunday, as we see it right here. So the default is actually option one. So think of how you could use this possibility. The variation on network days, a viable tool for calculating the differences between dates, not counting weekends and not counting holidays. And by the way, with international here too, we have that same option for not including the holidays. Dear students, on this worksheet called Workday, we have got some projects listed by their starting date in column C. The length of the project in days is listed here in column D. And if this were a seven day a week operation, if we wanted to know when this project ends, we will simply add 60 on to November 2nd. Example, equal the starting date plus 60 and we have an answer, January 1st. Now more common is the idea in a working environment, there are only five days, maybe six. So to get an actual count here and not include the weekends, equal workday. This function is analogous to network days. You might say this is working the opposite direction. And this too has an option for calculating our answers here based on different weekends. So we start with workday, left parenthesis, our starting date in C2, comma, the length of this project, it's in D2. So in effect, we are about to add 60. But this time, we will not be counting such a days and Sundays. Simply press enter and when you get an answer like this and it should be a date, we can easily change this to a date either by dragging with the right mouse, by dragging with the right mouse button in a nearby cell that has a format that you like. You use the right mouse button, drag it here, copy here as formats only or undoing that, I am going to click here and then restate what is stated. Another way to do this is simply to click this cell and on the home tab in the number group, click the drop arrow here and choose short date. There we go. So this does not count such a days and Sundays. However, you might have some holidays involved here. And so we got a list of holidays over there. And if you want to be using this in another cells here, as we choose the holidays, we will highlight not just the relevant ones, but the entire list. So double clicking here, 
and changing this, I am going to put in a comma. We also have the option to include holidays. And I will simply highlight all the holiday cells that we got listed over there. And because this will be copied down the column, I will make sure that this reference here is absolute by pressing the function key F4 after highlighting those cells. And there we are. Complete the entry and we will copy this down the column to not include those holidays. So now we see the differences here and it's quite a bit different than what we saw over here with simple subtractions. So these entries that we see here are giving us an accurate count based on the starting date and the project length as to when this project should be finished. We are not counting Saturdays and Sundays and we are not counting holidays. So those are the results that we get there. Now if this were in a different country or different culture where the weekends are different or the work days of work simply use the function right here period after work day international intl and this gives us the option here and let's take out this information here first take out the holidays portion of this so after putting in our starting date and ending date comma now we see a display showing all the two day combinations available all seven of them and all the single day combinations so in certain working environments the weekend might be friday saturday possibly it's sunday monday depending on the working location or might be just a single day so we pick an entry here the default is the first one saturday sunday which is typical in most western cultures so we choose the one uh, we want maybe it's a different culture here friday saturday pop in the seven there and we can tape it in or type it and then put in our holidays as well there if any of those holidays happens to be on saturday sunday or in any way overlaps the indicator that we have chosen here we don't get a double count and in other words it does not count the holiday and the weekend day at the same time so we will complete the entry here and so if we are in a different culture, we might have different answers here depending on different weekend constructions there. And some of those did change. By way of the workday function and its variation workday.international, the international version, we are able to track projects based on the starting date, a length, and possibly considering holidays and also those international variations. Excel has a valuable date calculating function called date diff, but there is something odd about it. If you go to the formula step in the ribbon and go to the date and time functions, you do not see date diff, and yet it works. And if you are using Excel for the make or something like Excel version 2011 and prior for the make, you will see this with documentation. Here we don't see it, and yet it is available and we can use it. So equal date diff and we are trying to calculate how many days have elapsed between a starting date and an ending date. This could refer to someone's work tenure or it could refer to a piece of hardware, any number of different things. We have got a starting date here called cell A2 and ending date in cell B2. And we might want to know how many days have elapsed D. This is one of six variations d in double quote we see them over in column e for the moment showing only days 1088 days we can see this for other days as well too at other times we might want to know how many years have elapsed now in this case it does the calculation in the same way we calculate birthdays for example or anniversary dates if we put in y now we are going to get smaller numbers here of course these are only two and three and what if just for the sake of argument here this represents a birth date and i will put in a number over here like 1982 and maybe this person retired from this organization or left this organization what was the age of this person at the time he or she left the organization something like that so i will put in a y and there is the answer 32 now, if this is the ending date here, this is almost June 2, 
but not quite so it's 32 it is calculated the same way we do birthdays this is accurate right up until the day so if the ending date here was june 1st i will put in the 6 here the number of years day is 8 32 but if it, this were a 2 it becomes 33 now we have got some variations on this here is some higher dates over here we have got service years we could be using this to calculate service years or if this is birth date and this is age we could be using the same function now what we might want to do in these examples too and we did this in an earlier uh, tutorial on the today function you might have seen that equal date diff if we want this to be accurate at all times we use the function today as you might say a moving target in here we are using it with equal date diff date diff remember begins with a starting date and ending date in a sense this is not an ending date it's today's date so we might want to show years that would be most obvious in this case and we can show that entering number of years for all these now at the time i am doing this it's uh, almost of january 2019 so we see the answers and if you try this later and if you are trying this a year later or six months later or whatever the date it is some of these answers are going to be different if you use the today function the way i am using this right here now we can also find out how many days it's been since the last yearly anniversary if we put in yd how many days after the anniversary remember i am doing this in december so it's roughly half a year this is likely to be something like 182 maybe how many days since the last anniversary since the last yearly anniversary see what's happening in these entries here again as i'm seeing these numbers now i'm at uh, january or december of 2019 so this is how many days it's been since the last yearly anniversary how many months has it been since the last yearly anniversary remember i'm at uh, january right now or december and this is june so this is likely to be six months okay not quite six almost so how many months since the last anniversary since the last yearly anniversary and another variation not as widely used would be to put in m followed by d and because i am in a december so some of these are perhaps a bit more obscure so i have been using the variations that we were here over in column e right here there is one slight bug here you want to be careful using the md combination because there is a bug in it i will use this over here equal date diff starting date in a11 ending date in b11 md double quotes how many days has it been since the last monthly anniversary and monthly anniversaries are based on day of the month and if if we are in january 29 when is the monthly anniversary there is no february 29 unless it is in 2016 but let's see what happens in the results here how many days has it been since the last monthly anniversary as we compare these two dates the answer one there probably would make some sense one month later then january 28 is february 28 march 1 is one day later what happens as we copy this downward you get an occasional odd answer how about this one what's the monthly anniversary if for example you were hired on january 3rd on january 30 your monthly anniversary would be well there is no february 30 so it should be march 1st but what are we getting here a minus one a minus one and then a minus two so for all these kind of entries here and i will take this down into the next few cells we are getting some unusual answers on some of these now outside of this use and if you never use md you are all set the other variations we saw here work perfectly but do remember that normally when you type a function for example average or sum or any other function as you press the left parenthesis you get a pop-up tip below that gives you some idea of what you should be doing next but what happens with date diff left parenthesis and we don't see anything other than the function name being repeated so no clue as to what to do next and if you go into the help system and you go right there for it 
it's not found. So that's a bit odd. Most books that cover Excel do mention net diff. It's really valuable and I think you can see in some of the examples as we have seen them here. If you are trying to calculate differences across months and if you need to measure time in months, two functions edate and eo month might be of use. In column A, we have got some employee IDs, a starting date, and depending upon the role in the organization the person has, there is a different probationary period. So based on the starting date, we want to know when the probationary period ends and each probationary period is stated in months. So three months after, for example, May 28th will be August 28th. But if we add 30 or 31, something like that, we are not going to get the correct answers consistently. So let's use the function called eDate. We have got a starting date. It's in cell B2. It's May 28th, comma, number of months later, three, and we get August 28th. And we can do this for the entire column. So we will double click. Notice when you have got a date like October 30th and you add four months, it would end up at February 30th. But of course, there is no such day. So Excel automatically adjusts that so that it is the last day of the month. This can be a negative at times too. So now let's suppose that the permanent status of these employees begins the last day of the month when the probationary period ends. We don't necessarily have to use this date as our starting point. We can, if we wish, use equal year month. Left parenthesis, use that starting date over in the cell P2. And then refer to the probationary period right here. And this will take us to the end of the month after the three month probationary period ends. So we see it's the 31st. So the entries we are going to get here will be last day of the month. And we see that in every case. And some cases, of course, they are the same like this. If this happens to be the last day of the month, it happens here also. So EO month means end of month. And you can see what's happening in each of the cases here. And if somehow or other you had permanent status starting on the first day of the next month, you could take this and simply add one to eight. That would probably be the easiest way to do this. So just I am just going to take this here, copy it with control C, escape, and over here equal press control V and then plus one. In these cases, we'll have the first day of the month. So the permanent status begins on the first day of the next month after the probationary period ends. So we could put in something like that. And if we did not really have that information in column E, of course, this fills the bill anyway. We are simply referring to the cells B2 and C2. Now there is some other occasional uses too. Here we are looking in reverse and we can use these numbers with negative. A project or program ended on November 4th. It was a one month program. What was the starting date? E date. Here is the date in question, comma, minus the number that we see in cell K2. So the starting date was October 4th. And if we want that display to be the same as it was over here, we can simply with the right mouse button, drag this cell over to here. Let go of the right mouse button. Copy here is formats only. Not truly necessary, but just to make it consistent. So we can see in all cases here, we are going backward in time. But in this case, we are moving backward five months, 13 months. Let's what see what's happening in each case we are using a negative in front of the program length last day of the current month we'll call it equal eo month let's use today as a date now this will work throughout any month at any time today is the current day whatever date might be now as i am recording this it's almost january 2018 2019 sorry but here we put in comma zero and in other words, we are not switching months at all. All right, so let's go back to where I was entering this data here. And as we type this entry, complete with the right parenthesis, we are going to get the last day of the current month. The zero means that we are not moving forward at all. There we are. So I am in December, so the last day of the current month. Now this will always be accurate. 
think of how it works if it is january or uh, february maybe it's january 2nd that's going to be january 2nd right there in the last day of that month right there in the last day of that month and because we are not moving forward or backward any number of months and if a in your organization the billing date is always the last day of the previous month you can probably imagine how that is going to work we can do this a couple of ways eo month today comma minus one this will always show me the last day of the previous month let me put a space in front of that so keep that in mind there is one other way to do this not necessarily better equal today so today as i am recording this it's december 10th and i am going to subtract from this the day of today and the day of today is the 10th that looks a little obscure maybe but we will get the same answer and let me redisplay that too with a space in front of it so those both give us the last day of the previous month and if that's your billing date of course that's why you might want to use it so different techniques here of using eo month and also e date and occasionally we were using the today function which was covered in a separate tutorial before this tutorial